Sorry, Marinette sent me. Mm -hmm. Sass! Don't worry, he knows. Sass, Marinette sent me this. I think she wants me to go back to this exact moment, but she knows I can no longer do that. You can't, but I can. I can go back to any temporal marker that has been placed in the past. But when a Kalami uses their power without a holder, it always has disastrous consequences. The situation must really be desperate for the Guardian to suggest that. Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Not that! Not again! It's the end of the world! What do you mean, again? This has happened before? Found it! Meow. Meow, 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 meow. And I love him. I okay. don't know. I know him, y'all. I just, know just him. him. <laughs> just the name. I know this. It's the end, the end, the end, the end, the end of my suffering. Or however the song goes. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't even know if that's a song or if I'm hallucinating it. Is that a real song? Or was it an acid trip? I hope it's not a pink song. For whatever reason, I don't like pink. Um, hey y'all, what is up? It's your homegirl TVC, and today we are reviewing the final episode chron chronologically in the timeline that is season four of Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, titled Ephemeral. However you pronounce it, is it? It's the twenty second episode. I think the season is only twenty five episodes. I doubt Miraculous goes for like. 30? I don't know why I was gonna say 50. That's a nightmare. <laughs> a 50 episode season. Oh my god. Emily's eyebrows don't match her hair here. Okay, um. How do I start this one? This is the episode that I think broke a lot of diehard Miraculous fans. Like a lot of fans that were just defending the show. Like, okay, it can still be good. Okay, I still like it. I saw them in my comments. Like, these are people who are constantly telling me, TVC, this show is not that bad, or you're going too hard on it, or oh, give it a chance. When they come back talking about ephemeral, it's it's like their souls left their bodies. And I'm like, oh, so this is how I was. Remember, remember season one, two, even some of three, where I was just defending the show, talking about how good the show is and everything. And then suddenly I just did a 180 and just started not liking the show or the direction the show is going in. And I remember people in season two or sometimes by the end of season one, but season two mostly where people are like, this show is bad, this show is trash. And I'd be thinking, oh my God, these people are so negative. What's their problem? The show is fine. <laughs> now I've become one of them. And now these people are joining us. I just feel like there's a lot of people just sinking deeper and deeper into the miraculous hate vortex at this point. And... It's it's basically it basically become that meme. You remember how I don't know like League of Legends. You know how they say nobody hates League of Legends more than League of Legends fans. Nobody hates the current Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. It's come to the point of nobody hates Miraculous more than the Miraculous fandom. We despise where this show is going. That an average an average outsider cannot hate this show close to as much as we do. And I get the argument from some people like if you don't like it, why would you watch it? And it's the thing of. We like it. We want it to be better. That's why we have so much hate. That's why we are so critical. Because we know how good the show can be. But it refuses. Now, I think this picks up at the end credits of the last episode. The last episode had an end credits. I knew about that. But I forgot it in my review. And I'm like, oh my god. The end credits are the bane of my existence. Like, what the hell? Also, before we get any further into the video, before I forget again, Miraculous Hogwarts, out now, buy, use code TVC20 for 20% off anything in all three of my merch stores. The discount code ends on January 5th or 3rd, I think 5th, first week of January, so hurry up. So Gabriel is, I don't even know, making plans to do something, I can't remember. Oh yeah, he has like a photo shoot or, or, or his hundredth perfume line dedicated to his mom. And he finds, I guess his brooch tells him when somebody is sad. Which you'd think, okay, does Marinette Miraculous tell her when something new is created? Does Pla does, Pla does Adrian's Miraculous tell him when something new is destroyed? So this, I feel like it's just a plot device. We know how Gabriel has more powers than the younger holders. And he doesn't have limitations. He doesn't have timeouts and such. But when um, Marinette created the charms to give out to people that was her powering up and then he had to level up as well to def to defeat that but then again we were led to believe he has unlocked all the powers of his miraculous but also we know their powers are endless 
it's only limited by the holder's imagination. And Marinette's a teenager and Gabriel is a grown adult with an, 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 a teenage kid. So his imagination will waver in terms of Marinette. But he's also a designer so he can create. I like how the villain and the hero are both creators in a certain sense. One is a young and aspiring fashion designer. The other one is an old fashion designer. But Gabriel still tries to create and invent and innovate because that's his job. What the fuck? Did I just find a positive in Gabriel Agrest? What the hell? So Gabriel is like, yeah, I'm going back home to akumatize this person, which you'd have to think. By the time he drops Adia and goes back to his house, wouldn't this guy's emotions have faded? Or was the emotion so strong that he's like, okay, this is going to be a powerful Akuma. So regardless, he tells Adrian, I am ordering you, you motherfucker, to go do this thing on my behalf. Even though Adrian is trying to point out, this is your shit. He, he re-rubs his ring again, which for the love of God... This is practically war. I'm here saying, bro, he's a he's a senti monster. People are like, he is not. <laughs> and it's come to the point of, we just need a canonical answer. And it's come to the point where I think the show is enjoying the teasing process. Ugh, that sounds sexual. Because, yeah, Thomas might say shit online, but he's he's practically said Luke, um, Luca and Adrian are a thing. He jokes, but he never says he jokes. So you never really know what's true and what isn't unless he's being blatantly sarcastic. But in this sense, him saying he's not a senti monster means jack shit to me. Because he also said my Euro was going to be the big bad of season two, three, one of them. She isn't. She's bedridden at this point. Thomas likes to hype his show up. And he is not above saying whatever is necessary to hype it up. And with this current fan theory, I'm pretty sure he's going to take it and roll with it. Because, well, not roll with it. He found out how fans liked Mary Cat, had, had created a whole love square and everything. And he took pleasure in destroying that. So with this theory, I feel like I don't think this theory started cropping up in season three. So I wouldn't be surprised if he kind of did something i don't fucking know this show took a while to come out the pandemic and everything pushed it back and these episodes are the latter half of the season so he might have been aware of all the fan theories when this came out but for the love of god he's rubbing his ring and adrian listen to what he says adrian i am your father and i'm giving you the responsibility to attend this press conference under no circumstances will you leave that room until it's finished all i'm asking is that you honor my work and the memory of your mother do we have an agreement? Yes, father. Oh, my God. See, here's the thing. People come and tell me he's an abused kid in an abused household. That is a reason why he's the way he is. And I'm like, yes, 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 I hear you. It is literally one of two things. Either he is so abused and controlled, he has no autonomy of his own, or he is literally in lack of autonomy, if that sentence makes sense. Oh, how do, oh my God. I even got a comment literally when I woke up this morning somebody saying um Adrian has memories of his childhood and if he was a senti monster that wouldn't be the case because senti monsters don't age and it's like um no they do it was literally confirmed by Thomas I think that they do age because you know the um, feast kind of lived in that thing perpetually but but senti monsters age I can't remember who told me this but I'm pretty sure I was I was told there was a tweet that senti monsters age. before it was like senti monsters can't transform with the miraculous and then we saw Nino senti Nino transform with miraculous is twice no once um in 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 fuck 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 what's his name the one where Chloe's mom got transformed again damn it these episode names are gonna drive me crazy where are you uh optigami that's the one in optigami senti you know transformed with miraculous and then they jump to well, well they, they'd know if he was a senti monster the, 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 the feather would be inside him and i'm like um no the my friend matsurific told me on twitter that if he was a senti monster the a mocked item is the rings so They'd know that, oh, the Amok is in Gabriel's ring, not in Adrian. Adrian is a separate entity. It's kind of like when in the Ladybug episode in season three, Ladybug is an Amok, but the, the little Paris charm thing, that is what the feather is in. But with Feast, he ate the Amok object. That's why Natalie was able to tell, oh, this is a senti monster. So if to say somebody got that Paris charm away from Natalie and this ladybug went, I don't know, into hiding and got a new like look or anything, she wouldn't know that's a senti monster because 
the feather isn't there. Same thing with Adrian. When he's transformed as Cat Noir, they wouldn't know he's a senti monster because he is not in possession of the feather. The feather is in Gabriel's ring. And have you noticed that it's not until this season, after Gabriel gets full control of the Peacock Miraculous, that he starts using his ring more. Yes, he's had, the, he's had, he's had his ring for a while, but he took his mother's ring. And his mother's ring is what he's been twisting a lot of the time to control Adrian. I don't even think Gabriel knows he's a sentient monster. He just twists the ring on his finger because he knows that's the one on Amelie's, Amelie's whatever hand. The, his own has been taken by Felix. So he might just be rubbing it out of sentimentality thinking of his mother because Adrian reminds him of his mother. But Gabriel is always giving out commands. So when he happens to rub the ring, he's giving out a command that Adrian just has to follow. Oh my god. This theory is confirmed. Holy shit. So he drops Adrian off and yeah, he's not really too happy about being here. You'd think that, oh, my dad didn't attend this thing. Now there's an Akuma. My dad is Hawkmoth. Oh, my son attended this thing and I told him not to leave and Cat Noir isn't here. My son is Cat Noir. But they give us another bullshit reason as to why Gabriel figured it out. Just whatever. So this guy is really powerful and you know how we, oh, I like the whole sunset scene again and also gabriel just blowing this thing off it, it, i wish the show gave the real gabriel a different personality to hawk moth but they're just they just have the same personality imagine if gabriel was kind of like timid maybe he told his son i'm having a panic attack going in public because your mother is not there it reminds me of your mother just something but they made gabriel a dick and they made hawk moth a dick hell so hawk moth is somehow less of a dick than gabriel i would have liked if Gabriel's personality was just different. You know how Ladybug's personality is different from Marinette, Cat Noir is different from Adrian. Same thing with Gabriel. It would sell the whole people not believing he's um he's this monster who's been terrorizing Paris. But at this point, if you revealed he was, if I was a citizen of Paris, I would not be surprised. But then again, we get to see an inside look of how his household is. Sidetracked from my main point, they couldn't defeat the villain easily because Cat Noir wasn't there. And they needed one, two, three. Four, five. Oh my god, Monkey King is here. Oh no, wait. Is that somebody's leg? Okay, no. Uh, um, there's somebody else here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm pretty sure Max is here. Yes. All the boys are here. She got, oh, she got the whole squad running. <laughs> All because Cat Noir is not available. And I love it. I love, even in the last episode, how, you know, Cat Noir saved the world. He was shown to do something and it was meaningful and it was, yes, the other half, the powerful, the destructive, miraculous, be useful, be helpful when Ladybug is... I loved it. So in this episode, they showed that, yes, even if you have the whole squad here, without him, things just don't work. We, we, we've been seeing how, okay, there's, there's a bunch of other miraculouses that can do... Um, a lot of jobs better i remember when queen bee was introduced people were like oh my god it's rendered the cat the the what you call it the cat miraculous i can't remember i believe i forgot that when queen bee was introduced her venom her power it was i remember the fandom buzzing saying oh cat noir is rendered useless cataclysm rendered useless because all you need is to venom the villain and then break the akumatized object easy peasy and that they have a point with that. Um, in this case, is the producer guy the metal box? Or is he in the metal box? And the metal box is like his, um, his amok. Because if he cataclysm it, it would just go berserk. I think the metal box is part of him. Which is more terrifying because they just want to cataclysm him. Whatever. So we've always been thinking, oh, Cat Noir can be replaced. All the other miraculous is kind of render him mute. Because if you venom him, if you venom the thing, the akumatized object and you break the thing the akumatized thing what am i saying english you didn't need to cataclysm it ladybug just needs to do her lucky charm after you break whatever is akumatized same thing with max you can teleport to the villain break grab the item break it but in this case it kind of shows hey what if what if you can't reach the thing the akumatized object until you cataclysm whatever is protecting it or in the case of queen wasp Yes. Why am I mixing Queen Wasp with the season three finale? What's that one called? No. I, in a past review, I remembered calling the last episode of season three Queen Wasp. But you know the one I'm talking about. Queen Wasp season two, where Chloe gets acclimatized while being, while still transformed. A miraculous is indestructible. So you technically, you literally need a cataclysm. So they try to use Max to teleport in, but it has so much money he can't get in. It's, it's kind of adorable, actually. 
I, you think the coins will fall out and these coins are people and oh my god this is just terrifying how many people did this man transform so zoe best girl points out the obvious oh my god kagami just why do you need jubilation in this point like i think um when ladybug just couldn't reach cat noir she's like okay i need everybody we just need to do something oh my god i love his braids so fill up with coins there's no room it'd be simpler just a cataclysm the whole safe i know i already left i don't know how many messages for cat noir oh boy so adrian is still here he's not even intending to leave but he sees all the heroes running and i guess it just resolves him like okay they've got this counting on you next question oh boy i don't know why natalie is telling him your father is counting on you you gotta do this it's like he just looked up there's an akumatization going on i thought whenever that happened it's like law at this point to evacuate and keep things safe but in this case these people are like yeah no we don't care the heroes got this uh, i just whispered to plague hey go cataclysm something i i swear i swear <laughs> but the show cre created a contrived reason as to why adrian couldn't leave but I think it's kind of to hide the fact that, yes, he's not willing to break the command that was given to him. But at the same time, it could just be, again, abused kid. Leaving so many missed calls. <laughs> Ladybug almost gets murdered by a fire truck. I can't remember whose video it is. I think it's Aiden, where there's a clip of all the times, like, this girl almost got crushed by vehicles. Oh my god. Yes, I don't know where all this smoke is coming from. It just landed on a clean floor, but whatever. Cartoons got a cartoon. Oh, I forgot. Got it. Yeah, they needed a lot. Oh, I was like, why did she see, like, you know, purple tigress in this when literally it didn't even glow on Pigella? See, it didn't glow on Pigella. But Purple Tigress didn't really do much. Regardless, this is what's painful. Because, well, not this part. Oh, oh, her braids. Is that her braid? Anyway, we love to see teamwork. Like, distracting him. Seriously? At this point, my mathematics skills just went here. I, I had a heart attack. I was like, oh, Lord have mercy. We're going to be here for eternity. Because even remember when, um, oh, uh, fuck. The episode where they killed Lady, Ladrian, <laughs> where um, Aspect was introduced. Adrian went back 2,000 whatever times. That is small beans compared to this. So he starts 001, 002, 003, and I'm like... You know safes have a limit. You could go 001, 002, 003, 004, 005. If you reach a limit, go back, try again, another five. But whatever, he goes back a hundred. Ah, fucking hell. No wonder Sass is the leader of the group. My guy has been through a lot. Bunnix too, but still. <laughs> he, he has relived things because him is more shorter. But I think Bunnix lives more in time. Whatever. He tries... And the combination is um, 999, 0, 0, 9, 9, whatever. And he's like, oh, it took, me, it took me 100 tries. And I was like, oh, yeah, 0, 0, 0 is technically counted as a try. So he empties the box. Is he a thing or just a head of gold? We never find out. So Ladybug is able to find the one big... See, we don't see him fall out. See, we don't see him fall out. See, we see him call whatever what what is this entity but whatever ladybug gets i don't know how she gets the golden coin breaks it and everything is fixed and adrian is like that's my woman this also is i won't say it's a retcon but i guess it kind of shows how cat noir is getting better he, he 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 was feeling left out of the fights and actions before but in this case he knows okay i literally cannot get away and he's like oh she she can handle it oh my god look at him Look at him. He just really, he truly deeply loves this woman. <laughs> or he believes in his friends. And I think Ladybug gives him the charm thing. About your new commercial. Oh no, no cat noir. I'll start over a hundred times if I hack to Ladybug. Technically, this is a hundred times you've done this. Ah, oh, the lighting. 
I don't see her give him the charm, but we can assume she did. And even if she did, we know the guy might try and sell it. So Luca is giving back his charm. And this is when Master Eyebrows comes in. I am not calling him his name. I think it's Suhan Hansu. Hansu? What the fuck? Suhan, I think. But Master Eyebrows is what I'm going to call him. And he is here to cause trouble. Basically, like, furious fool. Yes. Where he just came, caused trouble, got told off and left. Same thing here. This episode was really fast. Like, you could see them sprinting towards the finish line. But he's like, it's unacceptable. Where is the cat miraculous? You had nine guardians out. And she's like, yeah, because, you know, I, Cat Noir isn't here. How do you not know his identity already? And he's like, isn't he like the celestial guardian or whatever bullshit title they decided to give him? Shouldn't he be the all-knowing one and be like, yes, these two should not know their identities. But he's like, yeah, fuck that noise. So literally, the rule that Master Fu put in place is being questioned by the actual holder of the box. But Marinette, who was his student, is upholding the rule that even the person who owns the box thinks it's useless. But the show is still ch- trying to tell us, no, 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 that rule is valid. But I say, fuck that noise, because the person who had control of it doesn't even, like, even the person who owns the box thinks that rule is garbage. <laughs> What the fuck? And this is so embarrassing. He's just like telling her off in front of one of the people she trusts. And he knows this is Marinette. What the fuck? This is so embarrassing. So she says, okay, fine. I'll try and find out his identity because he's saying, I will collect the cat's miraculous and assign it to another more worthy guardian. And I'm like, fuck you. Seven ways to Sunday. What is your problem? She's the one that got out nine miraculouses, but Cat Noir gets punished. Because he couldn't be a hero for five minutes. But Ladybug can go to Paris and give her charm to a whole new guardian. And you don't say a word. Because literally, like, that is even the situation where you'd think he'd step in. Because he says, I'm watching you from, from the bushes. I'm, I'm, I'm spying on this 14-year-old girl. And, you know, all the other miraculous holders. And he still doesn't know who Cat Noir is. So he's only spying on Marinette. Which just goes to show Cat Noir is not even given half of a shit in this show. He found out Marinette's identity. They won. She's the guardian. She's the one that, as we've been told, Hawkmoth could never find her identity. But he couldn't figure out Adrian's identity. And he never even bothered to track him. Well, he's probably just keeping an eye on Marinette because she has the miracle box. But still, if you're that worried about him, track him. My boy always getting the burnt end of the straw, I swear to God. So, he's now trying to argue that because she fucked up, or she she didn't even fuck up, she just overstepped her boundaries, he's gonna get punished. But again, he never stepped in when she gave her miraculous and probably like responsibility of the miracle box to a whole other entity that he doesn't even know about. That That's, that's Daijobu. <laughs> My goodness. Fuck off, Master Eyebrows. <sighs> Luca is just being sweet and supportive, so what are you gonna do? Uh, he does the shower thing to buy him sometimes. He sees like 13 messages. 14 messages? 14. I was close. But you'd think she'd leave like 37 or 40 or something. But 13. Okay. If I don't leave 11, just know I didn't care. <laughs> but even 11 is when, okay, I'm freaking out, answer me, but I, I can go into the 20s when I'm worried. So I think he calls her and she's like really pissed off and he's like okay fine 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 I'm coming okay so this is where they formulate the plan oh my god sass I thought this was the point they formulated the plan to I don't know find the truth Cat Noir I'm gonna need both of you oh brother she was able to think of that plan on the spot. I thought that was when they formulated the plan I was like wow this episode really was speed running but no this is the point it's so oh you see this happening with her and Adrian, and it and it eats at your heart. But this one is even more fucked up and sad, but I love it because he knows who he's talking to. He doesn't mess up at one point and say Marinette. I would mess up at one point and say Marinette. They both know who the other person is, but she doesn't know that he knows that she that she's he. What the fuck? She doesn't know that he knows who she is. There we go. Aw, Tiki. Please, please don't get hungry. I like the parallels I was told in the last video where Plague spreads out his hunger on, over an indefinite period of time so he never goes berserk, but Tiki bottles it up. We, we, we love the parallels. 
So she basically says, okay, I'm going to go up on the tower and tell him to reveal his identity. You will rewind time so you know who he is, but I don't know who he is. And then you tell Suhan who he is and we Gucci. But then she, then she gives the stupid bullshit reason that nobody can know both identities because if one of us gets caught, we both get caught. And I'm like, okay, fine, because Cat Noir tends to sacrifice himself in fights and he gets like possessed and stuff so he could easily, easily, oh boy, easily reveal her identity to Hawk Moth. Shadow Moth, whatever. So they can't know. But then again, hold the fuck up. When he gets possessed, he could just reveal his own identity. Holy shit, I just blew, I just blew a hole in this fucking plot line. Seriously, when he gets possessed, why don't they just tell him to reveal his identity? But you know, Paris, so many people, he could say, my name is Jon Snow or whatever. And they and Hawk Moth has, has to start going through the records of Paris and then find like 10 Jon Snows and start having to whittle down which one of them it, it is him or is him. And that's even to say like all the Jon Snows are on record or whatever. So, Cat Noir knowing her identity makes no sense because he has his own identity. But, 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 but. They're trying to say that, oh, if he gets captured and he reveals his own identity, he can never reveal my identity. So only one of the charms is at risk and the other one is safe. And you can also tell that they're saying this in the sense that, oh, if Cat Noir gets caught, I can't get caught. So I can fix things. Not, oh, if I get caught, he doesn't get caught because he they never expect him to fix anything. So they're like, but somebody else can know one of our identities, but the other person can't know both. So you don't know any of, of any of our identities. So if you know Cat Noir's identity, it's fine. And I'm like, then why don't you ask him yourself? Like, seriously, I think even <laughs> Lucas says this. Why can't I ask him myself? Like, no, he will not tell anybody except me. I'm like, yeah, but he listens to you. If you tell him, hey, kitty cat, your miracle is going to be taken away unless you tell this person who you are. So just go tell him who you are. Or hell, tell Luca. So at least it's fair. Alia knows my identity. Luca can know his identity. <sighs> I wish at this point I thought Luca was going to say, well, I know one of your identities. Yeah, during the whole rewind thing, I did find out one of your identities, but I didn't want to say anything. So this whole thing doesn't happen. Because you know Luca can do that. But the show is like, no. Blah, 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 blah. I even hope I explained that correctly, because I swear to you, Marinette made this more confusing than it needed to be. Kitten, I asked Cat Noir his identity. He tells me. Since I'll hear everything, I'll also know his name. That's when you'll use your power of second chance to go back in time. I'll forget everything, but you won't. Or I could just ask him myself if you want. Thank It'd you. Be less dangerous that way, wouldn't it? Cat Noir will only tell if I'm the one asking. Oh, brother. All right. And then I'll tell the Celestial Guardian Cat Noir's identity. And he'll finally cut me some slack. Aw. Are you sure the fact that I know who Cat Noir is won't be a problem? Like I said, as long as I don't know who he is, everything will be fine. No, brother. Yeah. Well, she's right. She found out who he is and she literally lost her sh Oh my god. My son. Ah! My heart. Ah! Oh my god. This is so fucked up, though. She's lying to him to get his identity so she can rewind time. It's so... No. Just no. And Luca knows it's her. I swear to you, if I was him, the moment she finds out I'm rewinding time, I don't care about your goddamn signal. But I guess in his mind, he's like, well, finally the truth can come out and they can fix everything. Because everybody just hates this whole secret identity thing. So she's like, okay, tell me why you are the way that you are. What? Reveal yourself to me. Fuck. Why did I see Adrian in a trench coat flashing her? What the fuck? What's wrong with my brain? So she, he says, I'm Adrian Agress. She literally has a fit. Like, yeah, no way. And you know what? Yes, that is how she would react. He detransformed. Ah, my son, my beautiful baby. I love you so much. <laughs> she literally has a brain fart. She can't process things. Her being ladybug around him is just non-existent. I'm like, oh no, this is a problem. Oh no. <laughs> oh my God, my stomach hurts. <laughs> oh my God. They run out of time. He's like, yes, no going back now. And at this point, Sash would be like, yes, I can go back, but not you. Whatever. She says, yeah, no, next time. <laughs> he just bolts. 
<laughs> he's like, I'm out of here. Oh my god, the skyline is so pretty. And this ship must be very tall. She collects his power up and she's like, I don't know. Things will be fine. We'll work it out. She goes and tells Suhan who he is. He's like, yes, this is enough. And I think she starts plucking out his pictures. Oh no. She's like, I don't know who I'm in love with. Is Kat Noir Adrian's true personality or is Adrian his true personality? And, you're like, and you know and you know what? We've always been talking about how if, if the identities are revealed, um, Adrian would hurt more because, no, Marinette would hurt more because she'd feel, okay, does Adrian love the ladybug me or the me me? But here we are seeing Marinette re- literally doing what we thought, like, Cat Noir would do. Like, no, she's doing what we thought would, she would, she would complain about, basically. <laughs> My brain just paused for a second. She's literally here saying, okay, who who do I love? Is it Cat Noir? Is it Adrian? Who is the real him? Whereas if the shoe was on the other foot, people were getting mad at the mere thought that Marinette might be sad. Who does he love? The real me or the ladybug me? I, I can't even remember if this was said here. Why don't you ask Aria? I can't. She already knows I'm ladybug. She can never know that Adrian is Cat Noir. Shut the fuck up. You can see the contempt in her, in her statement. You already know who he is, and you know who you are. And technically, Adrian knows who Nino and Alia are. So if Alia knows that he's Cat Noir, and Nino is... What's Nino again? Carapace. The oh, fuck, I'm getting confused. <laughs> they all know, okay, we're all heroes, let's be friends! But I think Alia would also know that, okay, she would not be able to be a hero if he's... Oh my goodness. Alia would know that she can't be a hero around him. And he's my voice is so happy. He's like, oh, she'll, she'll tell me when she's ready. Ah, my heart is full. She's ready. She'll tell me who she is. My goodness. Meantime, she'll get to know me and then, who knows? I'm so charm yowing after all. I usually like smelly cheese, but I get the feeling that this is going to turn into some really, really stinky cheese. <laughs> Here's the... Th- there's Adrian living his best life in the background. Oh my goodness. Fucking hell. But here's the thing. Plague knows something is up. We Plague is getting so much beautiful development this last two episodes. This season is just doing him justice on a whole new level. After the whole, she is the celestial guardian guardian. We are just she's on a platter to her. That kind of irked me. But he, he we think of him as the trickster, the, the joker, the Loki of the universe. But he has common sense. He's the second oldest being after Tiki. Of course, he's wise. But he's just, he is literally chaos incarnate. But that doesn't mean he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. So he knows something is wrong. And on the flip side, Tiki is here being happy for Marinette. She's like, yay, no more lies. It's like, how do you not see the problem here? I'm in love with Adrian, but I've never been in love with Cat Noir. Lies. Lies, I tell you. Wasn't there an episode? Again, seasons ago, where she was like, if Adrian wasn't an option, she would definitely consider Cat Noir. My love. (laughs) My beloved. Look at him. Oh my god. This show could have an amazing agent, but they just refused to do so. So now, I think after he's confessed to Ladybug, he's able to be kiss Cat Noir's side to his friends. Or the show is kind of trying to imply he's always been that way, but nobody, I don't think Marinette has ever noticed. See, see the look of shock on her face. Like, no, this isn't you. I am a cat. Meow, meow. (laughs) <laughs> see all of them are just laughing and she's like oh no this is not him and that's my problem Marinette sees an idealized version of Adrian that we don't know has Adrian always just been this funny and and the show just doesn't show us because we see it through her lens or is he just being funny now because he's accepting his cat noir side she's not having this I hate it Language, not sumi so sick. he wrote the book I am a cat oh my god sorry for the joke Miss Bustier well, sorry for the joke means, okay, I'm not usually this funny. So he's embracing his cat noir side. Um, my God, they have a collision and I guess she's trying to be flustered, but she can't be anymore because she knows who he is. I'm badly clumsy. Don't worry about cat. I mean that. It happens to everyone. 
He's so enthralled with, oh my god, I revealed my identity to her. This is actually not vibing with me. She's treating it like knowing his cat noir is a debilitating illness or a horror or her horror movie come to come to life. I don't know how I feel about this. Everywhere she looks, she just sees Adrian transforming into cat noir. And you see music record scratches. It's like a living nightmare to her. I don't know how to feel about this. I have no idea how to feel about this. I swear to God. Oh, he's in the background. He is literally everywhere. Yeah. I Another thing people pointed out was how when Marinette ran away, because again, having nightmares, the one few times he shows up, Luca just literally leaves the band mid-song. <laughs> so he's trying to comfort her because he knows the truth. She's like, have you ever been revealed a secret that you don't know what to do and it changes your perception about everything? And I'm, I, I'm here cringing like, oh no, oh fuck, oh no, oh no. He's like, yeah, no. When I learned it, I just learned to respect the person more. And like them even more. Wait, 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 wait. To know them better and wait. And what the fuck? It looked so weird in motion. Even more. <laughs> what the fuck? It helped me to get to know them better and like them even more. Damn. They just showed his teeth. So his little talk, because he knows, okay, Marinette found out Adrian is cat noir. Her whole life is crumbling around her. And he just gave her a talk like, yeah, after I found out, I just liked them even more because I understood them more. I can see both sides of them. And, oh, her ex helped her reconnect with her current or her future, whatever. I'm just pissed off at, at, at Luca getting, both boys are getting the birth end of the stick. They should just date each other. That'll be the ultimate twist. So now that she knows who, like, Adrian is, I don't know how she got his number, but whatever. She's able to call him and tell him, hey, there's an Akuma. Oh my god, he's so precious. I love him deeply. How do you not trace her number? whatever even we see him know when there are akumas or a mock attacks even if he's not present but whatever they're trying they need to make a reason why this is logical why why is she in this position oh yeah i told you guys about me seeing a miraculous toy in the supermarket but i never put it in a video i, f I completely forgot i did that uh, sometimes I don't go through my reviews completely because they're 50 goddamn minutes. I just look for the points where I play clips and hide them. But again, let's hope I remember this time and put the picture up. This girl gets akumatized again. They're, they're basically they're able to fight together. It's all good. She's seen, I don't know, the good sides of him. Because, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I've said this so many times. She's seen the good aspects of him now. She's seen the Adrian in the cat noir. She's able to love him fully. And fuck you. I hate it. Oh my god. Cinematic. Beautiful. But I hate it. Because she's making it be like un- Oh my god, my son is blushing. Ah. Focus, focus, focus. So she's like- I'm- I'm ready now. Ugh. Absolute love of god. Their blushes are going to kill me. Literally murder me. Oh. <laughs> I love how Tiki just decided to float next to Plag. <laughs> These two are an item. Or they were an item or something. Whatever. I, I, I'm shipping the Kwamis more than the humans. She's like, oh no, do you not love me now? He's like, no, one of my closest friends, but the person I love deeply. Oh, fucking hell. Shit. It's so sweet and I hate it. I just gave up on this damn ship. You will not reel me back in. The height difference is doing it for me, you guys. Oh my god. The Kwamis are not vibing with this either. <laughs> why, why did they look down? Were you guys thinking of holding hands? Literally. Why were you looking at each other's hands? Oh no! Wait, I just come. I just came up with something. Did they try to work things out and it never worked? So they know, okay, we could never date because of our clashing personalities, um, our clashing ideations. The thing that makes us who we are is clashing. So we know how pointless their love is gonna be. Or we tried, it didn't work. Let's hope it works out better. Oh my god. Now he's happy and she's bored. 
which makes you wonder how was she an A plus student? And they she, and he passes her a card. Oh, he says A plus M. No. <laughs> shit, 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 shit. You will not drag me back into this Adrianette bullshit. Oh my god. And he's talking to her so sweetly and Oblivion all over again. No. I can't wait to see you. Me too. The tomorrow, then. Oh my god, couple talk is so sweet, but whatever. I don't know why Gabriel is coming into his room. Of all times, he's never shown up. He just summons him. And the most bullshit of reasons. He says, sweet dreams, my lady. Sweet dreams, my lady. And that's it. That's it. That is it. I they just had to speed run this ending. Literally. Because that is the most bullshit reason I have ever seen in my goddamn life. Oh, he's sleeping. Oh my god. Ah. I don't know. I think it's just the more Adrian. Adrian wakes up. His father calls him. He shows him a secret room. He he is not having it. Um, Plague is like, did you know about this? House? I'm not even sure we're still in my house. Oh my god, skin textures on his house. Stay hidden, Plague. <laughs> he doesn't know if they're still in their house, but technically they are. He sees his mother. Why are her eyebrows white? Is she fading? Is she decaying? So he transforms. He shows himself to his son. Obviously, Adrian is, you know, distressed. Finding out his mother is still somehow alive. Wearing the same clothes. I don't know how she's a molding at this point. Is there, are those stockings? They're kind of pretty. So find out his mother is alive and his dad is a villain. Because I was just ready for people to say, why did Adrian allow himself to get um, akumatized? That's so bullshit. But then it's like, well, Marinette got akumatized when Lila framed her. And she wasn't even able to fight it. It was just a coincidence that that shit broke. Or, you know, yeah, her power is luck. Whatever. His power is bad luck. Oh, I get it now. Because I was just so pissed. I was like, the last time this happened with... Shot blah, it was Adrian getting akumatized. So why is it again here? He's the one getting akumatized. It's not fair to him. But then it's like, yeah, he's bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I've been, I've seen the parallels where they, where they said, oh, this episode is the same one as Shot blah. I think Shot blah was the 22nd episode of season three. And both are what ifs. So Shot blah is what if Adrian found out their identities first. And this one is what if Marinette found out their identities first. And either way, the world ends. You know, one ends by Kat Noir killing everyone. The other ends by Gabriel killing everyone. So he akumatizes his son. You can see him fighting. But he, he, he's rubbing nothing. And wasn't the ring on his... Yeah. Is he rubbing the ring? The ring under his suit. When Adrian transforms, his ring is over his suit. But, like, his ring is the miraculous. So this is just so weird. Seeing him rub air. Can't ask me this. Do you understand? Oh my god, hear him say no back, my heart, no! Ah! Okay, 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 calm down, calm down, calm down. Oh shit. So I think he uses his, either his abusive dad powers or the senti monster powers because it's after that he just can't control. He just, he just, he just gives in. And another thing that the fandom really loves is that as soon as Plague came out, he was ready to control or delete this man. He was ready to end him. Oh my goodness. We love. Oh my god. Plague was just ready to end the owner. Holy shit. Yes. Fuck. Yes. You know what? As soon as he revealed himself to be Hawk Moth, that was when he should have done the cataclysm. But Adrian told him to hide. He transforms him. Wait a minute. The stockings are gone. Where are those her pants? Where did they go from white to gray? She is decaying in that thing. Oh my god. The shoes. Marinette comes to meet him at the movie theaters. I'm like, how do you find her? But the sun is acclimatized. You know, this, this is a vibe. This is a look. He actually kept the ears. The grown man kept the ears. And his eyes are purple. Oh, shit. I, ca I love it. He's a designer. For once in Gabriel's life, he did a look that I don't hate. She just went over it. How did she not see him? Hexagons again. He's like, I'm sorry. His, his power is to speed up time to whoever he touches. So he's speeding up her five minutes to only last seconds. 
And I'm here like, well, she could just use her miraculous, bring out the horse miraculous, unify and teleport because, you know, all these things happen like in seconds. We are the ones that get to see the whole transformation, using the powers thing to pad out the runtime. But she takes a picture of it and texts him. And that was very quick. Holy shit. I would have panicked. Like between her coming from there to there, she already deep transforms. I would literally take, I would literally bring out all the Kwamis and I'll say, use your powers, cause destruction. Let Get me away from this man. Because he has, you know, cataclysm. Oh my God. This was actually an intense moment. And as you can see, we only have five minutes of the episode left. Barely, because we have end credits. So, how will... Oh, my God. It's pointless. In just a few seconds, you'll be a simple young girl without powers again. Yeah. yeah she could have brought out a Kwame from her thing. But whatever. She texts Luca. Sass is in my sewing box. Marinette. Oh my god. Man's ran. Holy shit. Fine. No, no, Adrian, help! Fuck. Oh. oh my god, this hurts. Uh, yes. He yeets this 14-year-old girl. Uh, yeah. you, I really think she snapped her neck. Because she would not survive that impact. My yep, we heard that. We, we heard that. Holy shit. My greatest wish will finally come true. This is scary, my goodness. Cracked lips. He bursts into these people's houses. With his bike. The animation though, changing angles. I love it. Fuck. Because the homies are like, what the fuck? Oh my god. Bark is just a little gossip. What is what what's Trix doing here? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Somebody said this in the last episode that why doesn't Alia have a fanny pack? Did something happen in Quillin, Killin, whatever, that had her take Sass back? Oh no! What if Nino told Alia that Adrian knows their identity and she collected both of them back? Because what's Trix doing here? Literally, what's, what's Trix doing here? Anyway. Marinette sent me this. I think she wants me to go back to this exact moment, but she knows I can no longer do that. Bunnix? You can't, but I can. I can go back to any temporal marker that has been placed in the past. But, we but this isn't a temporal marker placed in the past. Well, when she was going to reveal her identity to Adrian, couldn't she just, you know, take a picture of that moment? Because it goes down to the minute, but this is just a watch. I guess, I get they can't put date and time because, you know... It's a show, but you could just say like November 15th or something, but I get they just put a time, but we're, we, the audience are supposed to believe that it's a time and a date and whatever. Do that. I need to go back to this exact moment, but she knows I can no longer do that. You can't, but I can <laughs> no <longer laughs> just holding his legs. You can't, but I. Why is the snake the Kwame of time and second chances? Can we, can we de 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 devolve, debunk, debunk that? Dissect that. <laughs> I can. I can go back to His any teeth. temporal marker that has been placed in the past. But when a Kwame uses their power, we fucking the know. We we've been hearing this back to back this season. We heard this last episode. The situation must really be desperate for the Guardian to suggest that. Oh, oh. oh no! Not that! Not again! So this was the point. I I literally screamed at my TV. What do you mean, not again? So, theories dark theories but theories what if emily was the one that did it the first time she did the wish to bring her husband back to life but in doing so in the new reality she dies and now gabriel wishes for his wife to come back and in that reality he dies no yeah in that reality he dies so it's just an endless loop of each of them getting the kwamis to remake reality. And this is also another retcon bullshit. Because in the first... No. In the first season? Yes. First, second season. It was revealed that when you do a unification, the wish takes a toll. It was implied that whatever you wish for, someone's life is going to be taken. Like, something of equal value is taken. A, a full mental alchemist or whatever bullshit. So if Gabriel wishes for his wife to come back, somebody will have to die in return. And that's where fans started saying, oh, imagine if his wife comes back, she sees him dead, and she becomes a villain to bring him back. And, you know, in my eyes, like, so it's an endless loop. Or maybe that's how 
uh, Marinette and Master Fu see the ultimate wish, but to Hawk Moth is like destroy everything to bring her back. Or his wish is to rebuild the universe because another thing, last episode, I said, why does Hawk Moth say dual metamorphosis, but Marinette says unification? And they say, oh, that's how Marinette sees it. This is how Hawk Moth sees it. Two different things. So this could be the same thing for how it is if the if Marinette Masterful whatever they get it and they do do the the wish it would just cost a life or something of equal value but because Gabriel sees it as a world ending event the wish it does become a world ending event it's what you want that the miraculous kind of does at the end of the day <coughs> kind of like how I said okay what's the limit to Cat Noir's powers and somebody pointed out hey he never cataclysmed and a, a mock. But Lady Noir did it first. And because she did it and it went haywire, he it was put in his mind that that's the only thing that can happen. But maybe if he'd done it, he could destroy the whole thing. But because of this already inbred idea, that's what happened. And I'm like, I kind of like how what you choose to do with the miraculous is what happens, kind of. So I don't believe the end of the world is how it's supposed to go down. Or this could just be a retcon where the show had to go, you know what, taking a life is too boring. Or maybe Thomas saw all the fanfic of people saying, oh, a life for a life. And he thought that was too boring. And he's like, you know what, end of the world. And it's like, God damn it. It was perfect when it was just, oh, you using the miraculous would cause someone else to die or something along those lines. Making it an end of the world thing, it's fucking annoying. It just is. And we've seen... We've seen them unify before. We've seen Plague and Tiki unify in Kwame Buster. Well, technically, Marinette was unified with Mulo, who then unified with Plague. So, whatever. Or, again, in the Gamer 2.0, we saw Marinette use Cataclysm, but apparently people said, no, it has to be Lady B Tiki and Plague. You transform with them together, not separately, or not in the sense of um, you already you already transformed with Tiki, then you unify with Plague, or you're Plague and unify with Tiki, whatever. So Hawk Moth does the thing, and <laughs> shut up. What's going on? Shadow Moth must have taken control of Ladybug and Cat Noir's miraculous, and he made a wish. Why are you explaining this? I understand he's saying what's happening, but, but go back in time. But what has that got to do with the end of the world? Imagine the world as your school notebook. Yeah, 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 your notebook. Everything is written in blue. You want to change one little thing in red, but you need to take, but you should erase everything, everything that's blue and write it in red. And here's the thing that I call bullshit on. <clears throat> if you're going to write it in red, is it going to be the exact same thing? Or just because you rewrote it just to have that one thing change, everything else change? Everything that's already been written in blue. Yeah, you erase everything that's already written in blue, but you're writing in red now. And technically, you're going to write everything exactly the same. So, you know, are you, if, if he makes the wish, they're destroying the world and they're rebuilding it. Will everything start from the beginning again? Will the Kwamis have to relive the next 7 billion years, I think? Wow, did I just get the age of the Earth correct on the first try? Was it 57? Is it 67 million? Billion? Was that the uh, universe? No, no. Universe is in hundreds of billions. Whatever. Will the Kwamis have to relive the whole existence of existence or the world again, whichever one is being destroyed, or will everything just rewrite to current day? I pity these Kwamis for the fact that this has happened before. Everything gets torn apart and rebuilt, except for them, because they are concepts. They don't die. Damn. Damn, what an existence. Aw, cute. So... If everything is going to get re rewritten the exact same way, why, why do we care that the world is dying? Yeah, 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 you're going to be in pain, but you're going to get recreated. It's fine. It's fine. So he's like, hurry. That's what happens when someone makes a wish. The universe is destroyed. Oh, universe. And entirely rebuilt. But who knows how? What do you mean, who knows how? He just made the wish that his wife should come back. So who knows how? It's bullshit. His wife will be back. Everything will be the same. Oh, Six. no. So do they relive the pain? Oh yeah, because he used second chance, everything went haywire. And I think that was, you know, a past ladybug came in. I don't know, is she the the, the um, Joan of Arc or something? I literally had to remember I put Rock Battle, her against Miley Cyrus to remember that. So they, they come back. 
hold on a sec. Adrian revealed his identity. Then they killed a couple times before, you know, Sass detransforms. Brooke, can you hear me? Hyperion, I gotta talk to Sass. Skills rest. You, why you are too surprised? You recommended him. I remember in the review where I was talking about, oh, Adrian needs to choose people. Like, technically, Adrian did choose Luca. He was the one that recommended him. And because, you know, Nernet has to be the eternal goddess of everything, it was... It felt like, oh, you are the perfect choice. And then I was like, oh my god, it is true. She never even considered Luca till Adrian said so. But because the show is the way it is, they just wrote it to be like, yes, that was the ultimate goal all along for her. Whatever. He's acting surprised, maybe because, oh, she actually did take my advice. Just don't act surprised, boo. He's the miracle holder, miracle holder that you chose. By that extension, I guess he kind of chose Kagami. No, not really. So, does, does that mean that now that Sass went to the... Oh, yeah. He kind of went back to the point of this while he's still transformed. So he has the memories of the future. Uh, I'm so sorry, Ladybug. I had no choice. What happened? I'm not really sure. I just saw a photo of a lucky charm. A watch showing 1 a.m. Why do you mean you're not sure? The world ended. Is he not going to tell her? And Sass Why do you only magical repeat? and disastrous consequences? And Sass's power is to turn back time. So time has gotten all mixed up? What the fuck? So this they just forgot about this plot line. The world ending. They just forget that. Now they have to fix the whole world time being fuzzed up and there's this satellite 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 in space that they have to go and put the times into. Oh my god. Ready, Astro Cat. Ready, Cosmo Bug. I think this is the first time they said it in this show. They're underwater. Forms don't have names, do they? Or the ice forms? Oh my god, Astro Cat. What do you even call her? Ready, Astro Cat. Ready, Cosmo Bug. Cosmo Bug. Astro Cat just sounds so much better. It reminds me of the aristocrats. Who remembers that? Ah, uh, the 60s? 50s? They go into space, they, they clock in the thing. Oh, yay, everything is fixed. Lucky charm. And then. Lord have mercy, why? I'm losing it now. Why? 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 Oh shit, am I drooling? What the fuck? Ah! What is that? Is that wings? Fuck. He's the best thing ever. Ever! Yo, look at me, I'm somewhere here. Somewhere here. You can just tell. Poverty. Like, look at all the lights you guys have. Come on, share some with the rest of us. Oh. That's a pretty tune. What is it? A classical piece. The Spoke Catathustra. By the way, what did you want to talk about earlier? Her about hair is the blue. Tower? Oh, nothing important. Forget about it. I like how he's covered everything, but no, her hair is open. Her ears are open. Like, you know, the vacuum of space wouldn't shrivel everything up, but whatever, space, cartoon, space physics. They go back. Husan is on her case, and she just tells him like it is. I'm a good guardian. I've proven to you a hundred times that I'm a good guardian. And Kat Noir and I have proven to you a hundred times that we were exceptional superheroes. And you, how many times have you told us that we were messing up when that was totally untrue? Oh You're my God. judging us based on your own fears and not on our actions. True, but still, fuck you. Oh, you're right, little lady. Fuck you. Perhaps I'm worrying over nothing. Oh my God. <laughs> What's for sure is that one doesn't come across a guardian like you every century. Yeah, <laughs> eat all this shit. How do you say? Oh that? my god. Wow. Why though? Okay, fine. Let an incredible not sneak up on me again, and I forgot. Okay, that was ephemeral. I hope I've said that right at least once in this video. People's breaking point. Some people really absolutely hate it. I, the thing is, the fandom hates what ifs. I love the sparkles on her suit. The fandom hates what ifs. They hate it. They hate rewind. They hate taking it back. But the show is adamant to give it to us. To give us reasons as, hey, if Cat Noir finds out first, here's the bad shit that can happen. If Ladybug finds out first, here's the bad shit that can happen. 
We, they need to defeat Hawkmoth first. And it's like, fine, we get it. Defeat the fucking villain already. Or, I don't know, let them find out. Let, let's do another what if. What if they find out at the same exact time? Because Adrian finding out first, he keeps his secret from... Mm, why did I just forget her name? From Marinette. I was trying to say Lady... <laughs> he keeps his secret from Marinette. And in doing so, um, Gabriel uses their love and tries to akubatize her, which is a very shitty thing to do. In that episode, he just wasn't a father, but in this one, he kind of was, whatever. And he reveals himself while trying to save her, and that's how Hawkmoth akumatizes them and everything. So, that's... He keeps his secret from her. He doesn't tell her he's got no war until, like, he's about to get akumatized. Vice versa, when Ladybug finds out first, she keeps her secret from him, but she reveals it. And they're cute, they're happy, and just him letting it slip. I really do feel this episode was rushed. Even with the Husan master eyebrows thing. You can see him saying, yeah, you're right. It's my fears. You didn't do anything. And it's like, no, no, no. She brought out nine miraculouses. And that's why you were worried. Because the the cat miraculous, the, sec the, the other most powerful one. Let me not say the second most. Because that's how the show wants me to think. But he's the other most powerful miraculous. Is not available. So why then... Do you not have control over it? That it, it wasn't a fear. It was a tangible thing that he saw that he brought to light. But now they're saying it's just a fear. Our actions have proven otherwise. And like, yeah, okay, fine, pound it. This show was sprinting towards the end. And if they had just a little more time, if they could just make this a two-parter, I really do feel they could iron out a lot of the kinks. But they probably had... The material they had wouldn't be enough to stretch it out to two episodes. So they thought, okay, instead of having two stretched out episodes, let's have one condensed episode. And it's like, really? You? Miraculous? You don't want to have stretched out episodes? Why does Chloe get two parters? But these these actual, tangible, really important stories... Important. <laughs> Shit, my accent. Important stories get compressed into just one. I like it personally but i can understand why people absolutely hate it i hate what ifs too i hate time travel but in this case the only other option is the end of humanity so i have to accept this i was more pissed off at, at oblivio because that was a mind wipe thing it was kind of contrived but i still love the cute moments they gave me cute moments i'm very easily placated i'm very easily subdued give me a little and i'll think it's a lot so they gave me just the things that i wanted so i don't care about the other things but i understand the people who want the whole package they see the bigger picture but the fact that a lot of diehard fans who have defended this show from to hell and back just had their own breaking points because this show was was not painted as a what if it was given as, oh, this is going to happen. But the fandom knew it was a what if episode. They knew this wasn't going to happen, but they still advertised it as, oh, it's going to happen. So it was at the final breaking point of the fandom. But once I realized that, oh no, this is a scenario where it's the opposite end, where if the other holder found out the Kwame, the, the identity of the other person, this is what happens. I don't know. It just kind of simmers me down because I know now they can't put, they can't pull any other bullshit. We've already seen it from Adrian's perspective. We've already seen it from Marinette's perspective. Who else's perspective can we see it from? Hawkmoth? Are you going to do what if if Hawkmoth's identity was revealed? So, yeah, ephemeral. 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 My phone autocorrects it for me. So it's a word. I don't know what it means, but apparently it's turn back time or speed up time. Oh, Adrian's power is to speed up time, but Waze Sassy's was to turn back time. He should really tell Ladybug what happened. I'm, I'm dead serious. But then that would mean that Luca knows her identity, but he'd just say, oh no, you texted it to him. But now that we've turned back time, everything is daijobu. Sorry, I'm using that word a lot. Jay says he can see me saying it on my channel. And I'm like, I don't think I've ever said it on my channel. Maybe once. But he's like, yeah, no, it'll fit you. And now I'm like, okay, fine then. <laughs> Whatever. I am going to end the video here. Thanks for so much for clicking to watch. We have finally reviewed every single goddamn fucking episode currently available of this show. We are not getting any more episodes till the new year. I don't know which one is coming next. I think it's Killing or the season finale. But I was told that because fans bullied the show, they are trying to release things in order. So Psychomedian when? <laughs> I don't know why I'm still harping on about that one. But yeah, apart from that um gonna do like trailer reviews and stuff live reaction stuff so 
miraculous stuff basically um but now that i'm done with this i can review arcane i can review young justice again because you guys were just ignoring any other video i posted that wasn't this so please i would really love and appreciate if you can support the other videos as well youtube is really really on my ass these days and because the videos have been performing so well i know if i post anything that isn't miraculous it's gonna tank so i have the decision to either not post anything on my channel again unless another miraculous episode comes out or just you know post what i want and just expect you guys to support me or just know that the videos are being posted because a lot of you say you don't get notifications and it's because of these daily uploads that you just know to come back so i appreciate you i love you i really do you make this job fun and worthwhile and you know what new year probably not new us let's be honest but let's pretend it's gonna be a new us so i will probably see you to you in the new year i'm gonna do a cartoon rewind video and oh yeah top 10 cartoons of 2021 video but they're gonna come out in 2022 so yeah thanks very so much for clicking to watch i love you don't forget to like comment, subscribe do all the things and about with that being said this is tvc Mwah. signing out